In the name of Allah, all praise belongs to Allah, and may prayers and peace be upon the Messenger of Allah. Assalamu alaikum. So many people have heard about Muslims fasting and about the month of Ramadan, but there are actually a lot of confusions and misunderstandings surrounding this topic. So inshallah today we're going to try and clear them up and give you a nice, concise explanation of fasting in Islam. So let's begin. Bismillah. Why do you fast? In the Quran, Allah says, O you who believe, fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you, so that you may become mindful of God. Fasting, called Saum in Arabic, is one of the most fundamental forms of worship in Islam. It's a means of spiritual purification and a way of developing self-restraint and consciousness of God. The idea is basically that if you can stay away from things that on any other day would be totally permissible and good for you, then you should have no problem staying away from sin, staying away from temptations, and from things that are not good for you. When people fast, they do not eat, drink, or engage in sexual activity from the time of dawn until the time of sunset. In addition, the fasting person makes an effort to refrain from negative actions or behaviors such as lying, cursing, gossiping, or anything else that might diminish the spirit of the fast. When you're fasting, you're constantly aware of it throughout the day, so that actually helps you to remember Allah and avoid sinful actions. This state of God consciousness, called taqwa in Arabic, is something that you hopefully carry with you even after the fast is over. When do you eat? When you have the intention to fast, you should wake up extra early before dawn to eat suhoor, which is basically your pre-dawn breakfast. Technically, you can continue eating until dawn begins. But in actual practice, people usually stop eating a few minutes before dawn just to be safe. Once the dawn comes in, the fast has begun and you can't have anything until sunset. No, it does not matter if you still have a few bites of raisin bran left. You can't have anything until sunset. No, not even a snack. Yes, that includes water. You can't have anything until sunset. If you intentionally eat or drink anything during the day, your fast is broken. The only exception would be if it was an accident. Like if you forgot momentarily that you were fasting and you had a couple of pieces of watermelon and then all of a sudden you're like, oh no, I'm supposed to be fasting today and I ate. Calm down, you're okay. In that case, you just keep fasting and nothing is broken. It's all about your intention. At the time of sunset, the fast comes to an end and we have iftar, which is something small to eat or drink to officially break the fast. Traditionally, people break their fast with dates and water. A short time later, usually after completing the sunset or maghrib prayer, people sit down for a full dinner. What do you do when you're fasting? During the fast, we try to increase in good deeds and remembrance of Allah. We also strive to make as much dua or personal prayer as possible because we know from the reported sayings of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam that the dua of the fasting person will never be rejected. When do you fast? Fasting can be done on almost any day of the year, but the major time for fasting is during the Islamic month of Ramadan. During Ramadan, Muslims are required to fast during the daylight hours for the entire month. So this is the time most commonly associated with fasting. In addition, there are other times during the year when Muslims are encouraged to fast, such as on the day of Arafah, which is on the ninth day of the month of the Hijjah, for Ashura, which is on the 10th of Muharram, by fasting that day as well as either the day before or the day after, and for six days during the month of Shawwal, which comes right after Ramadan. Also, it's considered a sunnah or tradition of the Prophet ﷺ to fast on Mondays and Thursdays, so many people fast on these days as well. So inshallah, I hope this helps you to better understand fasting in Islam. There are two main pillars of fasting. That means if you are missing one of these pillars, your siyam is not accepted. Number one is the niyyah, the intention. The second one is to abstain from the things that nullify your fasting. There are a number of things that nullify your fasting. Number one, food, drink, and anything or same effect as food or drink. Whether it's, for example, blood transfusions, or whether, for example, drips, or whether it's kidney dialysis. These are things that break your fast. If a person eats or drinks in Ramadan or outside of Ramadan out of forgetfulness, they continue their fast. Even if you've had a full meal and you forgot, the Prophet ﷺ in the hadith found in Bukhari Muslim, he said, whoever forgets 
while fasting and eats and drinks should complete for verily Allah fed him and gave him drink. But if you see somebody, they are eating or drinking, do you remember the hadith and say Allahu Akbar, how lucky is this person? And you sit there and, you know, and just wish you were in their position? The answer is no. You should actually tell them because they could be doing something haram. The second thing that breaks your fast is marital relations during the days during between Fajr and Maghrib. Conjugal relations, spouse. It's better to prevent yourself from approaching your spouse during a day, which means no kissing, no fondling, no hugging, just in case. The next, if a person deliberately vomits by either putting their finger down their throat or by smelling something deliberately to induce the vomiting, you have broken your fast. The fourth is menstruation and postnatal bleeding. It's obligatory for her not to fast and it is obligatory for her to make up those days she didn't fast it after Ramadan and before the next Ramadan. According to the majority of the ulama, masturbation, which is actually haram in Islam. If a person does this during the days of Ramadan, is what invalidates the fasting. And of course, if a person intends on breaking their fast and say, look, that's it, I can't handle this anymore. They've released their intention. Even if they don't drink or eat, they've broken their fast because you have to always couple your fasting with the intention. Hijama or cupping or what is similar to it, bloodletting, this also invalidates your fasting. Brushing your teeth with toothpaste, this is makru. It's undesirable to do this because you can have remaining aspects of the, of the toothpaste coming down your throat. And besides, for those of you who have that bad breath, and we all have it, know that Allah Azza wa Jalla, He loves the smell. That the smell that is emanating from the mouth of a fasting person is more sweeter in fragrance than the smell of musk. Oh,